remonstrances. Representative Frederick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I have to say just a few words about developments in Baltimore. It would be easy to retreat into a complacence that says that, well, it's not that bad here. It would also be easy, as many commentators have, to say that the riot rioters are just thugs. I'm not going to make excuses for violence. There are no excuses. There are, however, explanations. Probably the most important thing to remember about this kind of riot is that it is an eruption of built-up pressure. When people have nothing or little to lose and lots to be angry about, it's a dangerous condition. A man in Baltimore was put into a police van, handcuffed, and came out near death, his body showing the effects of hideous homicidal violence. No plausible explanation has been offered. His offense? He ran away. What kind of system of laws or system of order is that? How can anyone who believes in civil society not recoil in horror from this news? But what we should be really worried about is that people are not that surprised. These riots are not a response to one incident. They are a response to sustained violence in the form of relentless oppression. Economic oppression and unfair targeting, including violence, are not separate issues, but part of a system that those targeted see as coordinated. When they lash out, it may seem indiscriminate, but when it seems that the whole world is against you, everything looks like an appropriate focus of rage. And we should note that if you get beyond the so-called mainstream media reporting of the situation, you may find that it's a small contingent that's engaged in these violent reactions. Our media's focus on the unusual to the exclusion of the everyday decency of most people takes away context and makes rare acts to be the norm. And yes, there are provocateurs who see this as an opportunity to make trouble, and others who intentionally provide the opportunities. The whole picture is much more complicated than you will see on the news. So city leaders in Baltimore call for order, as they obviously should, and we all should. This disorder is an emergency, but what, what they will do about the disorder that some communities experience, what, what will they do about the disorder that some communities experience on a daily basis? It is a fairly recent development that we sometimes see video evidence when officers sworn to protect and serve instead of instead target certain people for scrutiny and in some cases for violent treatment. It is a fairly recent development that when we see what happens when officers stop individuals for just being and deal out punishment, which is not their charge at all. It is a fairly recent development that there is sometimes video evidence. But with or without video evidence, these things fester. They get discussed around dinner tables. The experience of pretext stops, driving, walking, or as, as, as might as well say, while black, are so universal in black communities around the country that where an officer might see a black man and, likely, and see a likely criminal, I see a black man and see someone with whom I might probably share this life experience. Representative. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further remonstrances? It doesn't work that way. 